chapter 25 is drug therapy for psychiatric problems. Psychiatric disorders are a broad group of illnesses that includes things like emotional irritability, or sorry, emotional instability, behavioral problems, and cognitive dysfun dysfunction. They can be biologic, like chemical imbalances, or genetic, or psychological, like emotional conflict. They can affect a person's ability to function in society or relationships. Some specific illnesses include major depression, generalized anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Depression, anxiety, and psychosis are major psychiatric illnesses. As many as 30% of patients in the United States report symptoms of depression, but only about 10% experience major depression. And I really think that it's higher than that. That's just how many people actually report it, you know? Anxiety affects as much as 18% of the population in the United States each year, and again, I think that that is higher. It's just the amount reported. The incidence of schizophrenia, which is a major psychotic disorder, is about 1% in the United States. Drug therapy is extremely important in the management of psychiatric problems. Um, before we give any medication related to psychiatric um, problems, we need to make sure we have a complete list of the patient's current medications, just like we do with every single medication we're gonna give, right? I also wanna know their baseline vitals. I wanna know their risk for falls, their IV site patency, if it's an IV medication, their mental status and suicidal thoughts. After I give these, I wanna monitor blood pressure and for abnormal heart rhythms, monitor for dizziness and drowsiness and reassess that mental status. Teach your patients to take all these drugs exactly as prescribed, immediately report any side effects and keep all follow-up appointments. Avoid activities requiring alertness because a lot of these medications depress the central nervous system. Change positions slowly, avoid alcohol, Talk about drugs before surgery with any provider that they're going to be working with and wear a medical alert bracelet. And again, with these medications, they need to take a missed dose as soon as possible, but don't double up. So if it's almost time for the next dose, don't take more. And when we say avoid activities requiring alertness, we don't necessarily mean forever, but just until we know how they're going to react to the drug. Many of these can cause drowsiness and dizziness and blurred vision, but that doesn't happen in everyone. So someone might be able to drive or whatever while they take these and other patients may not. Remind women of childbearing age to notify their prescriber if they are pregnant, plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding as well. So first we have depression. This is an illness characterized by persistent feelings of sadness, despair, loss of energy, and difficult deal difficulty dealing with normal daily life. It involves the body, the mood, and the thoughts. It affects how a person eats and sleeps, how they feel about themselves, how they relate to others, and how they think about things. It interferes with the ability to function normally and causes pain and suffering for them and their loved ones. Um, there's um, a big box on page 459 that lists the factors associated with depression. Um, there's physical factors, chemical factors, hereditary factors, etc. There's also a huge box on page 461 that talks about the types of depression and um, a smaller box on 461 that talks about the symptoms of depression. We're not going to get into the um, necessarily the different types of depression, um, but they're there if you'd like more information. Children and adolescents with depression often pretend to be sick or refuse to go to school or get in trouble in school or have negative outlook on life. They might feel misunderstood. Major depression is a disabling mental disorder marked by a persistent low mood, lack of pleasure in life, and increased risk of suicide. Dysthymia is a chronic but less severe form of depression characterized by moods that are persistently low. The symptoms aren't disabling like those in major depression. Bipolar disorder, formerly called manic depression, is characterized by cycling moods from severe highs, which is the mania, to severe lows, which is the depression. Um, there's also a box on 462 that lists the symptoms of mania, but those are really the only ones we're going to get into. So depression is thought to be potentially hereditary. It can be caused by an imbalance of neurotransmitter levels, altered neuroendocrine function, and psychosocial factors. Um, again, there's that box that lists the factors of depression. So these neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine assist with the communication between the neurons in the brain. When neurotransmitter levels decrease or become imbalanced, the neurons may be less able to communicate with each other, which can lead to depression and other mood changes. 
we use drugs to improve the symptoms. The two most common groups of drugs used to treat depression are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, and tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs. SSRIs have fewer side effects and are more commonly used. With most of these drugs, it's important to know that it can take as long as eight weeks for symptoms of depression to improve. So a lot of times people get discouraged when their symptoms are improving right away. So it's necessary to encourage them that um, it does take up to a couple months for these symptoms to improve. SSRIs work by increasing the amount of serotonin in the brain by inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin, increasing that amount of serotonin, like I said, in the brain. TCAs inhibit the reuptake of other neurotransmitters like norepinephrine and dopamine to increase their levels in the brain. The intended response of all antidepressant drugs is to correct depression and to decrease the symptoms of the depressed mood. Side effects um, are most common are nausea and vomiting, weight gain, diarrhea, drowsiness, and sexual problems. Other side effects include apathy, anxiety, nervousness, confusion, headache, weakness, abdominal pain, anorexia, dry mouth, increased saliva, increased sweating, weight gain, I already said weight gain, um, and tremors. Um, adverse effects of tricyclic antidepressants are cardiac related. Um, increased suicidal thoughts in children, adolescents, and young adults is common in all antidepressant drugs, um, as well as allergic reactions and serotonin uh, syndrome. Signs of allergic reaction to antidepressants include chest pain, increased or irregular heart rhythm, shortness of breath, fever, hives, rashing, itching, difficulty breathing or swallowing, swelling, decreased coordination, those tremors in the hands, dizziness, lightheadedness, and thoughts of hurting oneself. Before I give these, I want to ask about any family history of depression. I also want to know if they have any usual or what their usual bowel movements are like, um, what their fluid intake is like, their diet is like, and if they're taking St. John's wort. For tricyclic antidepressants, I want to know if they smoke. Um, after I give these, I want to reassess their mental status, watch for side effects and adverse effects or allergic reactions, and assess for suicidal thoughts. Um, Teach your patients that, again, these are not a cure. It can take one to eight weeks for symptoms to improve. Um, we don't want to come off of these medications um, right away. We want to discontinue gradually. The prescriber might even start with a lower dose and then gradually increase it until they have the therapeutic effects. Um, Frequent mouthwashes can help decrease their dry mouth and teach that signs and symptoms of um, serotonin syndrome include confusion, agitation, restlessness, stomach disturbances, sudden elevated temperature, and extremely high blood pressure. In our kids, risk of increased suicidal thoughts is increased. Um, fluoxetine can cause unusual excitement, restlessness, irritability, trouble sleeping. Um, venlafaxine can slow growth and cause weight gain, um, or sorry, slow growth and slow weight gain. Um, SSRIs have a moderate likelihood of increasing the risk of birth defects or fetal harm, but they haven't been tested during pregnancy, so we avoid them. Some pass through the, mess, the breast milk, so we would avoid those in breastfeeding as well. Unwanted effects in the breastfeeding infant would include, th include things like drowsiness, decreased feeding, and weight loss, so we don't want that to happen. Um, tricyclic antidepressants have a moderate to high likelihood of increasing the risk for birth defects or fetal harm, so again, we don't use those in pregnancy. Um, in our older adults, they might require lower doses, especially with kidney disease or liver failure. Then we have anxiety. So anxiety is apprehension, fear, or worry that can occur with or without a cause. Um, there is a box on... Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. A box on page 467 that lists the symptoms of anxiety. There are a lot of symptoms of anxiety. Um, common anxiety disorders are panic disorders. This is an intense feeling of fear or doom. Um, generalized anxiety disorder, which is excessive anxiety daily for up to six or for at least six months. Phobic disorders are persistent or recurrent fears of certain objects or situations. Obsessive compulsive disorder is compulsive actions or characterized by compulsive actions. And post-traumatic stress disorder is an exposure to near-death or near-death experience um, or any sort of traumatic event. Um, a panic attack, the main symptom of panic disorder is characterized by anxiety or terror and usually lasts between 15 and 30 minutes. Generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD, most often begins during childhood or adolescence, but it can begin at any age. Um, someone with OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder becomes trapped in a pattern of repetitive thoughts and behaviors that don't make sense. They're distressing, but very difficult to overcome. 
And just know that short-term anxiety attacks can be treated at home with interventions like talking with a supportive person, um, meditating, taking a warm bath, uh, resting in a dark room, performing deep breathing exercises. Um, but sometimes it is beyond that and medication is necessary. Um, group therapy can be useful for anxiety such as fear or flying, um, sorry, such as fear of flying. Um, physical conditions can be treated with drugs or, or different surgeries depending on the cause. So with all of these, treatment depends on the cause. Um, so in anxiety, both physical and emotional symptoms can occur. Physical symptoms can affect the heart, like increased heart rate, like the heart's pounding. Um, the lungs, like increased rate and depth or shortness of breath. Uh, the nervous system, like tremors and headaches. Emotional symptoms of anxiety can include apprehension, dread, irritability, restlessness, and difficulty concentrating. Um, Let's see. There's another box on page 468 that lists the causes and external factors that could be as associated with anxiety. Um, causes and factors include, again, mental conditions, physical conditions, or the effects of different drugs. Mild anxiety is common. It requires no treatment. Mild anxiety is actually necessary. Um, like if you're nervous about your upcoming exam, it might... Um, give you motivation to study, right? If you really are nervous about your job interview, it might give you or, um, the motivation to prepare for your interview. Um, you know, if you're um, a little nervous about money, then it might motivate you to find a job or whatever. So a mild anxiety is common. It's normal. It's actually necessary to function. Um, but moderate to severe anxiety is a symptom of a psychiatric disorder. So we treat that with anti-anxiety drugs. So benzodiazepines used to be very popular, but now we use SSRIs more often because they have milder side effects and there's a less risk of dependency. The major benefit of benzodiazepines is that they can act within 30 minutes and they may be given as needed, whereas it may take SSRIs three to five weeks to control anxiety and they have to be taken regularly, not as needed. Benzodiazepines decrease symptoms of alcohol withdrawal and prevent delirium, um, delirium tremens, um, and we use them in acute situations. They increase the inhibitory actions of GABA in the brain, which again is a neurotransmitter in the brain that sends a message to the brain to slow down or stop firing, relaxing the brain and decreasing anxiety. SSRIs relieve anxiety by affecting the action of serotonin in the brain. Serotonin stays in the synaptic gap longer and the transmission of impulses is slowed. And then we have anxiolytics like buspirone that binds to the neuroreceptors for serotonin and dopamine in the brain and increases norepinephrine metabolism to relieve anxiety. The intended response of all of these meds is to relieve anxiety, right? Um, also to decrease the symptoms of anxiety and to improve the sense of well-being. Side effects of benzodiazepines are related to the central nervous system effects <clears throat> and to buspirone specifically are dizziness and drowsiness. Other side effects include sleepiness, depression, lethargy, apathy, um, memory impairment, disorientation, amnesia, delirium, headaches, slurred speech, behavioral changes, euphoria, dysarthria, the inability to perform complex mental functions. Um, suddenly stopping benzodiazepines can cause a potentially life-threatening reaction of with or withdrawal symptoms, including nervousness, restlessness, um, tremors, uh, weakness, and seizures. So this is why we don't like to use benzodiazepines long term. We use them PRN. If somebody becomes um, dependent on them, then they can have these symptoms if they suddenly stop. Um, adverse effects of benzodiazepines are seizures and coma. Abuspirone is hallucinations and heart failure, and clonazepam is suicidal ideations. Um, most drugs used to treat anxiety also cause sedation or sleep and are likely to cause dependence um, when they're taken for extended periods of time. Before we give these, I want to know if they have a history of drug dependence. Um, Let's see, I want to monitor their gait for steadiness, monitor the level of anxiety, and assess or monitor for suicidal ideations. While patients are taking these drugs, observe for signs of dependency and report them to the prescriber. Um, teach your patients to take these exactly as prescribed. Avoid alcohol and sleeping pills. Teach the patients about the signs of dependence and instruct them to report these signs immediately to their prescriber as well. Um, wean off these drugs gradually and don't take benzodiazepines with antacids, but as we've learned, we're not taking any medication with antacids, right? In our kids, benzodiazepines um, causes a sensitivity to their effects and the side effects are more likely. We really don't like benzodiazepines with kids. Clonazepam can also cause a decreased mental and physical growth, so we don't like that either. 
Use of benzodiazepines during pregnancy causes the fetus to become dependent on these drugs and can cause withdrawal symptoms after birth. Um, so we're going to avoid them. We also avoid SSRIs during pregnancy. Teach your patients um, that they could, or your older adults, sorry, your older adults could be more sensitive to the effects of any of these and they're at greater risk for side effects. Monitor for respiratory depression and we're gonna start with low doses. Teach family members to watch for and report changes in con cognition or decreased mental alertness in older adults that take these meds. And then we have psychosis. This is loss of contact with reality. So common symptoms are illusions, delusions, and hallucinations. We treat these with different psychologic therapies and then antipsychotic medications. Um, when we're talking about psychosis, um, there is a table on or a box on page 473 that lists the symptoms of psychosis and then another one that lists that lists the potential causes of psychosis. Um, treatment of psychosis includes again psychological therapies. This could be like counseling, guided discussion, and cognitive behavior therapy to help change or eliminate unwanted thoughts or beliefs. And then we use antipsychotic drugs to help decrease the hallucinations and delusions and to help stabilize thinking and behavior. Um, so all antipsychotic drugs produce a tranquilizing effect and help relax the central nervous system. They block dopamine receptors and the dopamine pathways in the brain. Um, we don't just use these on a whim. They need to be prescribed. The intended response is for the signs and symptoms of psychosis to be decreased um, and the behavior and schizophrenic behavior to be improved, um, as well as suicidal thoughts being de decreased. One theory is that these disorders develop because the brain overreacts to neurotransmitters in the brain. Um, heredity can also play a part in development of psychotic disorders. Um, again, there are symptoms and causes of psychosis on page 473. Side effects of all these meds include sedation, drowsiness, dizziness, and lethargy, as well as restlessness and insomnia. Remember, we're depressing the central nervous system, so we have a lot of central nervous system side effects, um, as well as GI upset. Adverse effects are tardive dyskinesia, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, clonazepine and prochlorperazine specifically can cause neutropenia, um, clozapine can cause um, Myocarditis, quetiapine, and risperidone can cause risk of death in people with dementia, so we don't use those with our dementia patients. Um, and then with lithium is toxicity. Before I give any of these, I want to ask about suicidal thoughts. I want to know their baseline orientation, mood, and behavior. I want to assess their intake and output and their baseline weight. I also want to ask patients about smoking because smoking can decrease the effectiveness of a lot of these different meds. Um, I want to continuously monitor their weights, intake and output, and bowel function, and I want to reassess their mental status and watch for sedation um, and continue monitoring for suicidal thoughts. Teach your patients that the prescriber might start a low dose and gradually increase, um, always to follow those prescriber instructions. Teach them about side effects and adverse effects and the importance of psychotherapy, not just taking medications. We also want them to avoid alcohol and other central nervous system depressions be, or depressants because um, these meds are depressing the central nervous system already. Monitor bowel function and increase activity. Um, take drugs with food if there is a GI irritation and use sunscreen and wear protective clothing and hats because there's a potential for photosensitivity. In our kids, their side and adverse effects are more likely. Um, these are going to be monitored very closely with use in children. In uh, pregnancy and lactation, we would avoid taking antipsychotics um, and lithium. Um, these drugs can cross the placenta and cause unwanted side effects in the newborn um, infant, like involuntary movements. In our older adults, we want to remind them to drink daily about the same amount of fluid that they lose in the urine. They could also be more sensitive to the side effects and adverse effects. Um, they're more likely to fall as well. So um, to prevent falls, teach them to change positions slowly while they're taking them because of the, the dizziness. Um, start with lower doses, especially if there's a renal issue. Um, these can also cause blood pressure to fall, so monitor that closely. And that's all I have for you on psychiatric problems.